All right. Hello, everyone, and thank you for coming to How to Remove and Replace Offensive Symbols in Tablet Weaving. Um, my name is Thora Infroda, and I am um, a companion of the Laurel, and I reside in the Kingdom of Ontir. Um, I'm a tablet weaver. I specialize in uh, silver wire tablet woven brocade, and um, I am excited to share this with you. Let me start my presentation. Um, for questions and discussion, I am asking that you um, allow me to complete the presentation uh, just so I can get all my thoughts out and then we can have a discussion. I am not an expert on hate symbols. I am a tablet weaver, so there could be symbols out there that I have not discussed and I would love to have your input. And um, if there's something that needs to be added to this presentation in the future, um, I would love this to be a living document that we can build on as a, as a community. So um, I really impaired. Uh, the background of these slides are uh, a tablet woven band that I myself modified. Um, during the course of making it, it contained an offensive symbol and it was removed and replaced with a different symbol. This, um, this windowed symbol here is replacing that symbol. We are gonna cover um, background as to why this is a discussion, uh, some history with our organization is how uh, some Controversy came about regarding uh, tablet woven bands uh, in the past. Uh, we're going to identify offensive symbols um, that uh, you need to look out for when you are looking at these tablet woven bands uh, in history and um, being mindful in their reproduction. We're also going to take a look at a list of historical tablet woven examples that contain offensive symbols it's not an exhaustive list, but it will give you, you know, a general idea if you're looking at a particular band. Um, if it's on this list, you may need to do some um, review on how you may want to modify or remove those symbols. And um, point four, how to do that. And five, uh, how to document historical objects with offensive symbols in them. So um, if you're new to the SCA or are unfamiliar with tablet weaving, um, you may not know why this is appearing in um, a DEIB collegium um, as a topic. Um, but in 2018, the board of directors released an official press release in response to a tablet woven ban that um, was highly publicized because it was worn by um, a reigning um, royal couple, and um, it contained uh, swastikas or filfots in period. And the band was the Snart to Mo 5 band, which um, is a very advanced tablet weaving band and something that a lot of weavers had looked to as, you know, a, a culmination of their research and technical skill. So it, it's a very technically difficult band, but it contains offensive symbols um, that uh, in history, um, you know, these bands predate uh, the Nazi party that appropriated uh, a lot of these symbols by a thousand years. But, um, you know, now in current times, there's a lot of trauma behind these symbols. And while formal apologies were issued for this incident, it really brought to light that there was a rather large disconnect between um, us as weavers seeking historical accuracy and being mindful of these historical precedents that have really changed the meaning and response to these symbols. And there's a lot of trauma, pain, and anger that are wrapped up in these symbols, and we need to aware of that as weavers. And tablet weaving isn't the only art that has um, some of these symbols depicted in it, but it was the example that um, caused the board of the directors to issue this um, statement. 
So background discussion, uh, besides the swastika, you know, or Philfot, which is pretty obvious uh, why that is um, not okay to reproduce, you know, it was predominantly used by the Nazi party and it's continued to be used by hate groups as a symbol of hate. And um, there are other runes that are associated with the Nazi par party, such as the Sig rune and the Hagal rune. Um, and I wanted to mention these because um, there has been a discussion on some other motifs that are used in tablet weaving. Um, there's an S motif and an H motif that's used in some of the historical bands. Uh, these motifs are noticeably different from the Sig and Hagal runes that were used by the Nazi party. Uh, the Sig rune looks like a lightning bolt and is often depicted as a double lightning bolt, so SS. And the Hagal rune um, that was used looks like a asterisk almost. Um, so it's not the H variant typically, though when any of these runes are combined with swastikas, it obviously gives off the impression that, you know, this is a hate symbol, even if it was, you know, predating that by a thousand years. You, you can't disconnect those symbols with, you know, the reality that they are now have that appropriation, that stigmatized history. So we need to have awareness of that. So even though the S motif and H motif in itself um, isn't a symbol of hate, um, some individuals may still experience some discomfort viewing those symbols. And so we as weavers should be mindful of how our art impacts those around us. And if someone's sensitive to that, um, you know, we need to have awareness of that and respect that as well. The goal of this presentation is to provide guidelines to tablet weavers who would like to recreate historical objects, but without symbols that would be offensive to viewers. Um, we should also be mindful not to create original art with runic designs that were appropriated by hate groups. So, um, you know, we need to be especially mindful what we're wearing. So if there is a runic symbol that is clearly on the hate symbols list, that's something that we should avoid. Uh, this is a topic that's still widely debated in our global tablet weaving community. Um, there's a lot of people that produce these bands for museums. Um, and there are a lot of people that really believe in preserving the history of these bands intact as they were um, because these symbols predate um, you know, their appropriation. And I understand that perspective, but at the same time, these symbols, when viewed by certain individuals, cause real harm and they should always be avoided um, when producing, displaying these bands within the SCA. The banning of symbols uh, by groups, cultures, and organizations is really not all that unusual historically. Um, the Navajo people uh, ha have used um, a symbol sim similar to the swastika and they uh, decided to discontinue its use um, as a sign of friendship for people that, uh, you know, also have trauma with this symbol. And um, they were also using this symbol prior to the Nazis appropriation of it. Many countries also legally restrict this symbol uh, such as Austria, Brazil, Czech Republic, France, Germany, Hungary, etc. cetera. Um, so this shouldn't be, you know, all that unusual. Um, identifying offensive symbols. So, there's a lot of great resources if you're not familiar with which runic symbols are used as hate symbols by either the Nazi party or uh, more modern hate groups. Um, there's quite an exhaustive list on Wikipedia. Um, I've sent some other links here. I'm gonna have my email at the end of this presentation if you would like any of these links that I'm posting in this PowerPoint. Um, I know that you can't really click it through Zoom or YouTube, so I'm happy to prov provide that to all of you. Um, just as a general rule, if there's a symbol in your um, band that looks similar 
to a hate symbol, it's likely going to, you know, give some sort of reaction to a person that has trauma in association to that symbol. So if it looks like a hate symbol, don't weave it. Just modify, remove, and be sure to explain if someone is confused. Um, but I'm all for removing symbols out of the abundance of caution. It's better than including something that's potentially going to cause someone trauma or harm. Um, I'm going to provide a list of historical tablet weaving examples. Um, this isn't an exhaustive list by any measure, but this is the list that I could identify um, in the amount of time I had, and it's actually quite a bit. So um, I'm a burqa area brocade expert. Many of the burqa bands have this uh, problem. Um, many of them have fill thoughts on it. So those are swastikas. They, they can look um, very similar to a swastika or they can have some different characteristics, but these are the list of burqa bands that have um, a potentially problematic symbol in them. Um, there's also the Trondheim band from Norway. Um, most of these are brocade bands. Um, there are a few uh, typical tablet woven examples that are thread in uh, without the supplementary weft, um, but this is going to be most common in brocade. So the wide mammon band also has this uh, swastika in it. And then, um, here are several more. And you can see this is not just a Norse problem. Um, it's not simply early period. This um, motif was popular really from the seventh century to almost the, the 14th century. So we see a lot of 12th and 13th century bands with swastikas and most of them are chasuble bands are used by the clergy in different areas. And you can see there's still even more. And um, I wanted, I, I don't really have references for this presentation, but I wanted to mention that uh, Nancy Spy's book, The Ecclesiastical Pomp and Aristocratic, Aristocratic Circumstance is a really good resource for um, people looking for brocade bands because it tells you what motifs are in the band. So if there's a swastika, this uh, book will list it. Uh, removing and modifying offensive symbols. So um, there are a lot of resources out there for patterns. And um, a lot of us use social media pages to you know, communicate with other weavers and to find patterns online. And um, Pinterest is really not a great place for finding historical tablet weaving patterns. And so a lot of us have gone to these tablet weaving Facebook groups and, you know, they have really robust file sections with a lot of patterns, but I wanted to warn individuals, especially if you have a trauma associated with these symbols, um, really the safest group is the SEA tablet weaving Facebook group. It's an unofficial group, but the administrators have, um, are complying with SEA, uh, directives and guidelines and that uh, the filfot and swastika is not permitted in posts and other offensive symbols are also not permitted, of course. Um, tablet weaving sharing limits posting of filfots and swastikas to the comment section. So you're not going to be waylaid in a post, you know, scrolling through your Facebook feed, but um, if you go into the comment section, uh, you might see offensive symbols there. And then the historical tablet weaving Facebook group is unsafe um, for this. They are a full recreation group and uh, they will, um, there are individuals there that are producing the bands for um, research purposes. They publish papers on them um, and they reproduce them complete with these images intact. So I would also check with your kingdom regarding local social media groups. I know Ontier has a Sable Lion Weavers group and um, they do not post images of offensive symbols there, but just, you know, I would reach out to your kingdom and see if there is a 
local social media group that also stores patterns and discusses these topics. Uh, for the removal of offensive symbols, um, I mentioned that I'm a brocade artist, so I am not typically removing symbols from um, a, a typical tablet woven example. Um, brocade has a supplemental weft, so uh, the patterning is a bit different, but for standard tablet weaving, um, the there, there are many uh, digital tools, especially if you're a visual person, um, I find that these pattern generator tools that let you chart out something visually. Um, so if you want to reproduce a band by, you know, taking the picture, if you know the number of tablets and you can sort it out by looking at, you know, a, a pattern or, a, a, sorry, an image of it and plot it into one of these generators. These tools are just really useful for being able to capture a design motif and eliminate other design motifs. Um, GTT, um, the Guntram's tablet weaving thingy, um, I have heard that this has not been uh, great for more recent versions of Windows, but um, there's a lot of patterns that exist uh, for this program um, that have already been edited and amended. So it's a good program if you if it will work on your computer. Um, I think some people have uh, figured out a way to run this on, you know, kind of using a command prompt, but I'm not an expert on that. So if some, if you know someone that's familiar with this software program, I know that it's a good one that people use frequently. And there's a lot of patterns that have already been created that um, have removed these symbols that are compliant with that software. Um, there's also, um, if you're more of a numbers person or if you have uh, you know, more technical ability with tablet weaving, a lot, of the tab, uh, a lot of the patterns have a turning diagram um, associated with it. And um, the threads should show the A card on each line. So it is possible that you can simply look at when that uh, unsafe motif starts, you can look at the position of the cards and then reframe the cards to where the A is correct for the next motif progression. Hopefully that makes sense, but I've put a link here that uh, has a better explanation of how to do that. Modifying offensive symbols. So obviously the resources on the previous page can also help with the modification as well as the removal. Um, the brocade bands, um, it's really, so I have a picture of a brocade band pattern here. You can see it's really just a chart that shows you where to put the brocade weft. Um, what I do is if it's easy to cut the symbol entirely, so if I can just cleanly cut it out of the band, I'll do that. If it has kind of some diagonal, um, components and mess that would make it just difficult to remove entirely, I will usually replace it with a different symbol. And there's a variety of motifs and symbols that you can replace uh, a fill pot or a swastika with. Um, anything square-ish uh, will work, like an X or uh, a window motif, um, like I did on this band. Um, there's also, um, let's see, these patterns, um, these particular Berker patterns can be found on the Sable Lion Weavers group, but this uh, pattern was created by Margot Farnsworth. So there's also, I also have a SNARKMO5 um, edited pattern that was provided by Drifa and or Drifa and Rada, she's a Laurel here in Ontario. Sorry for those of you that don't live here. Um, I have provided it here on my Google Drive. So again, if you need this link, I can send it to you after the presentation. Um, but uh, this is the band that stirred up all the trouble to begin with. As you can see, it's quite a complicated looking band, um, even in this edited form. And um, the picture shows, uh, 
Sir Liam uh, Canary Olfsen's uh, reproduction of the band. He was the individual that created the original Start Start and Mo Five band that was um, caused these complications, and he chose to reweave the band as sort of uh, closure to that situation for him. And um, he has this pattern as well. It's corrupted right now, but he said that he would be willing to work with anyone that wanted to reproduce the band without the Hagal or the H motif, um, if that's something that is uh, problematic for you. Uh, this one that Drifa has does keep that H motif. Other options. So there are a lot of historical tablet weaving examples out there that don't contain offensive symbols. And I've listed three books here that are all safe to peruse for historical bands. Um, the first two are um, normal thread in tablet weaving without any supplemental uh, weft, so no brocade in the first two. And the last one is a book that's only brocade and it is a late period um, brocade book called Model Block by Ann Newper. Um, this Apple Seas and Fox Nose book um, is uh, out of print. They have a later book. Um, both books contain um, a modified sun wheel. It's, it doesn't look like a filfot. It's got a circle in the middle and it has kind of some feet, but if you, um, out of the abundance of caution, it is a little similar. So just bear that in mind that that is present in those books. So we're on to documentation. Um, how I document, historical objects uh, with offensive symbols is to kind of just cover up the swastika here. Um, so a lot of these bands have, you know, pictures that depict that. And I used to just um, cover them with a uh, post-it note so people can remove them to see the original band. And I just I no longer really do that because I don't think it's necessary. I think it's pretty obvious what's being covered. So there's really no need to um, show that to anyone. It, you know, in our society, it's just not really a appropriate to put that out there. And I don't want, you know, a sticky note to accidentally get removed. And, you know, that could be problematic. So just covering or blurring, um, I find to be the best course. And you can do this like just in paint or you can physically with a marker, um, you know, scratch it out on a paper if that's, you know, if you're not, uh, I'm not the most technical person myself, but you know, however you wanna do it, just as long as you can't view it in your documentation, I think that that's the safest approach. Um, that's all I have for today and I'm, Happy to open this up for a discussion and um, yeah, just thank you for attending. And if you have any questions or comments, I, again, I'm not an expert on hate symbols, but I, this means a lot to me and I don't want my weaving to cause anyone trauma. And I think that as a society, this is a small ask for us to do. And it doesn't really impact anything about you know, what we're doing, our historical research, our, you know, our art, it's really just a good thing to do, you know, for the betterment of our society. So I would encourage us all to be mindful when we're creating our art and choose examples that uh, are not going to cause issue to our, our fellows. All right. I'm going to go ahead and stop the recording and you can have a Q&A session. Great.